Hi, all. It's Eileen Egan. Hi, Ruth. Hey, everyone. I saw I had to change my background so I'd be in the right location. Everybody's got the same location except me. My, that's my real one. <laughs> I thought I'd change it so I could be in the same place as Lindsay and Linda. Good to see everybody. Oh, Cam, okay. Cam, what is your background? Right? Let's see. My Good background, evening, uh, everyone. Oh, sorry. Good that's okay. I was just I was just saying good evening everyone. This is Anita Ivory with the Citizens Assistance Office. Hi Anita. Hi. Hey there, Cam Yurdy uh, in the Office of Planning here at the city. Uh, I don't have my background because I'm actually having to take this from a, an undisclosed location and I oh. cannot uh, put my virtual <laughs> background on. But uh, good to be here with you all this evening. Undisclosed location. Oh, that's mysterious. <laughs> I'm outside and it's it's not terribly pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful day today though. Oh my goodness, it was beautiful. I sure was. Absolutely, the weather's great. Mm -hmm. It was really nice. I'm afraid to say that out loud though. <laughs> don't know what it's gonna look like later. It's supposed to rain this weekend. Spring showers. Huh? Ruth, we have a call tomorrow morning, right? We sure do. We have our Beulah Acres Home Steering Committee meeting tomorrow morning. I may have to leave it a little early. Okay, Sorry. no problem. I don't I'll think I've missed for a while. Or, so. Yeah, I, I maybe have missed one, but I, I try not to. But um, We know things come up, of course. But well, we have our quarterly breakfast uh, Thursday morning. So there's just all the stuff that has to happen at the last minute, so. Totally understand. Yeah. I'm also going to just make sure no one is in the old meeting link. Um, so forgive me, I'll be off camera for just a second, but I'll be right back. Hello everyone. I am just in the other meeting chat trying to get anyone who joined that meeting um, the information they need to hop over to this one before we begin. So I'm going to give it about another three minutes and then we can kick this one off.
Hi, everyone. I just was trying to make sure I pulled everyone out of the old meeting chat into our new meeting. There's still a couple of people, but in the interest of your time, I don't want to delay us any further. So we'll just have to make sure. In the, in the future, I'll just make sure I send as many indications as I can that that one is canceled. But thank you um, to all of you who are able to hop on this meeting link. My name is Lindsay Williams. I am a month in as your planner for Acres Homes. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Tonight, we're going to start off by talking a little bit about Let's Talk Houston and also the Neighborhood Preservation Tools meeting that is happening in Spanish tomorrow, but already happened in English. Um, we'll talk a little bit about our All Lights On Houston campaign, our working group restructure, healthy outdoor communities, and Neo will give updates as well as Be, Be Well Acres Homes and the Houston Parks Board, and then I'll open up the floor for community updates. So this meeting will not be nearly as lengthy as our last one, but um, just wanted to make sure everybody's on the same page on a couple of things as we move forward together. So again, I am Lindsay Williams. I have been your planner um, for about five weeks. So I've learned a lot in that short time. There's a lot of exciting things happening. Um, if you go to Let's Talk Houston, the I posted um, almost an Acres Home newsletter of sorts of the things that I, the information that I was given. Uh, thank you to the Be Well team that put together a lot of that information about ongoing activities um, with the partners that are um, participating in that cohort. And um, I also have the surveys for our working group, as well as a resident tool chest um, where I say recordings from like the neighborhood preservation tools meeting is there. The all lights on Houston meeting is there. So if you get an opportunity, um, please be sure to check out let's talk Houston.org slash acres home. Um, that'll also be where I put any kind of flyer information and there's an area there where you can upload stories as well. Um, so just want to make sure we're all utilizing that tool as we move forward. Are there any questions about Let's Talk Houston? OK. Also, the meeting recordings I will not have access to, so they'll be um, uploaded to Let's Talk Houston as well, just as Sasha was doing prior. Unfortunately, the last one, um, due to ownership rights in teams, it would not let us pull it down because it's still tied to Sasha's email. But um, I did upload all the documents associated with that meeting and posted them on Let's Talk Houston. So any of those resources um, are readily available whenever you'd like. So we had our Neighborhood Preservation Tools meeting. It was well attended. Um, there was about 120 attendees across the city, of course, not just Acres Home. Um, and in that meeting, we talked about minimum lot size and minimum building line preservations. Again, that meeting recording is available in Let's Talk Houston. But tomorrow we will have one that is only in Spanish. Um, it, will, it will be recorded in Spanish. Everything will be um, in the language so they are able, our, all of our residents are able to utilize that um, tool as well. So if you know any Spanish speakers or have any Spanish neighbors that you think would be interested, please feel free to pass along that information. And this flyer and information is located on Let's Talk Houston. So are all lights um, Houston, we still need a captain. There is a sign up link on Let's Talk Houston if you'd like to champion this for Acres Home. Acres Home did get a resident that signed up for the Complete Communities University. So um, I'm hoping that if we can find someone that maybe we can convince the new Acres Home Complete Community um, enrollee for the university to, to sign on and take this on. Um, it's 
our campaign that we're trying to lead to empower residents to be able to install new street street lights, replace ones that are broken and um, get trees cut around canopy. So we went through a meeting December 8th to kind of teach residents how to advocate for themselves in that way. And we identified captains for a lot of the neighborhoods that um, wanted to move forward with that process of having one person that was identifying things or one person as a point of contact. And so um, if anybody's interested, let me know. I see a hand raise, Eileen. Yeah. Is this something that the super neighborhood is not uh, interested or able to take? I can do, I can do a direct ask to them. Um, I'm not sure if a direct ask was made to them or if it's something they're interested in, but I can definitely reach out and see if that is something um, that they would like to take on. I think it, that's a to me. Thing. It would it would make sense that, because they already have a structure being connected through the neighborhoods, so that each neighborhood could have their own, you know, reporting group, uh, rather than, you know, trying to be one person covering all of Acres Home or something. Great. No, that's perfect. Um, I'll definitely present that to their president and see if that's okay. something that they could take on. Great, thanks. thanks. So, working group restructure. Um, like I said, I joined, <laughs> I joined you all about a month ago, and there were a lot of ongoing meetings. Um, some of the, the ones in blue are the ones that the either the mayor's office of complete communities or the complete communities planner um, was hosting. So I just wanted to kind of reassess if these work because some of these we did join and there was no attendees or low attendance. Um, so things like the Acres Home Complete the Acres Home Community Engagement Meeting, um, the Workforce Council Meeting. I would love to combine our Workforce Council with our Economic Development Meetings in the future. I think that would be a really great um, structure to help us move towards actual implementation and past planning of these activities and do a, um, a few proof of concept. And Cam is now with our team. Um, he is our economic development planner and a real expert in these areas. So I really think we can move forward a six month strategy, long term strategy of what implementation looks like and start doing some real projects. Um, the surveys are available right now on Let's Talk Houston, but I just wanted to get a niche initial feedback. One, do you all think meeting on a monthly basis for complete communities is needed, or do you think um, maybe the working group should be meeting more often and the overall complete communities meetings um, can happen on a every other month or quarterly, or um, I'm just looking for feedback on how you all feel the structure is working and, and what we can do to improve. Not everybody at once. <laughs> well, this is Eileen. I'll go ahead and jump in. Um, uh, Elizabeth, I see your monthly. I, I, I think, Lindsay, the conversation is a little cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what do we want to accomplish? Um, you know, with combining these two work groups with the, uh, the complete communities as a whole, and that should lead us to how often we need to meet. OK, uh, and I'm open to, to anybody else telling me I'm wrong, but. That's just my thought. Hi, so this is Ann. I think that um, if you're on a working group, it does need to meet monthly because we're supposed to be working on things. Um, and if we're really moving forward, then we need that constant communication if not more than um, monthly, um, you know, if something were to come up. As far as overall complete community meetings, um, I'm not so sure about those. I guess it just depends on the content, but I personally would like to be able to come to a complete community meeting and talk about things that are going on in the community, as well as give an update on um, the economy committee, what, uh, you know, what we might be working on. 
Awesome. Yeah, that's great feedback. Um, so just to give you all a little insight on um, the strategies of how I run my other communities, I have an overall complete community meeting about every other month. And in those meetings, I bring them updates similar to what we had last meeting. If the planning department is doing a mobility study, um, if the developer for Bethune has an actual update, if there is a project that is kicking off in your community or things that are happening on a large scale. Give me two seconds, my two years. Sorry about that. So, and in those larger meetings, we usually narrow down um, our objective and also get updates from our working group meetings. So I use those as the platform that everybody can come together, um, whether it be our civic organizations, um, our nonprofit, our business owners, um, other groups that are meeting and kind of the catalyst for them to share information and also um, cross collaborate about what they have going on as well as leading a complete community um, initiative that's led just for that neighborhood. So I use those as a pretty much a connector and a conduit for everybody to be in one room in one space on neutral ground to kind of give updates and share information and also generate ideas. The working group meetings are used just for um, identifying projects and objectives and moving those forward to implementation and we meet on a much more regular basis. Um, when we we applied for a list grant last year in one of the communities and that group was meeting um, every other week, no, bi-weekly until we got closer to the date of the event and then we met every week. So the working groups met on a more consistent basis and the overall complete communities met on a, um, it was pretty much every other month we were meeting unless there was something um, really big happening that I wanted to bring the community's attention to. But since I'm not familiar with necessarily the structure of how everything has been working, I definitely don't want to come in and throw a wrench in things and kind of uproot them. I do know the Workforce Council meeting was led by the Mayor's Office of Complete Communities and they no longer have that capacity. Um, they are, the staff is very limited. Um, but I don't want that work to stop or those conversations to end. Um, the community engagement meetings, I envision we can still continue those with your council as well, because I think they would be the direct conduit um, to helping us move those things forward. And the economic development meetings um, to just open up that group and make sure that everyone who's wanting to move things forward in that category and conversation uh, is privy to that. So again, any feedback is good. Lindsay, would you talk about what the community engagement meeting has been, that weekly meeting, and what I, I the economic development group, when, when have they been meeting? So the economic development group has not existed um, prior to this. I think there was a meeting around um, <clears throat> redevelopment Montgomery, but not necessarily overall economic development. And since we have the IEDC report back and CAM mm -hmm. has done um, feasibility analysis and also we've developed strategy around how we can start proving concept and getting things funded and identifying land and things of those nature that we can immediately um, or on a short term at least uh, capitalize on, I think it would be advantageous for us to start meeting around economic development in the community. The community engagement meeting, I attended one, but there was no attendees. And so that's why I'm wondering if that works. Is it a bad time? Is it something I that you- I don't think the community knew about it. I never knew about it. And I'm yeah. on the NST. So- okay. Jennifer, <laughs> I love the so, virtual and physical hand rights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking at the participant list that's on right now, and there are 12 of us, and I, I know most of the people and over half the people on the call are from organizations doing 
work in the community. And then uh, two of the community members are actually uh, HOC community engagement liaisons. So I, I am thinking in large part, the average community member has no idea that this is taking place. And I'm wondering how we can all work together to kind of spread the word about these meetings. It's hard for, I think it's almost kind of wrong for us to be making this decision when there aren't community members actually, more community members, I should say, participating in the decision making. No, that's absolutely valid. Um, I think that, with the last meeting, I sent it out via constant contact because those were the contacts I had. And this one was kind of ongoing um, and a switch of the calendar. So it was a weird transition. But mm -hmm. I <clears throat> I would like advice on strategy of is it that community has become disengaged? Do you think they're unaware? Um, should I take flyers to the schools and kind of build the momentum back up and start taking um, things out to maybe the multi-service centers and things of that nature or. Um... Part of it is probably that there's been, you know, because of COVID, there's been such a disconnect between community members. Like we would normally be having different celebrations and park events and we'd be meeting in person at super neighborhood meetings or more people would be meeting at the local community center or multi-service center or something like that. So I think there has been a disconnection, but I think in multiple ways, not just that, you know, complete communities has necessarily done something wrong and disconnected from the community purposefully. I think that it's just kind of been a de facto <laughs> thing that's happened during COVID. And, and it just means that we all, including Healthy Outdoor Communities and Neo and, and all of us, need to work that much harder to re-engage the community um, and get them participating with us or finding out are they meeting somewhere else do we need to figure out where we need to go to meet them no that's that's good that's valid feedback and a good strategy i think i will reach out to um rain as a starting point and see if she knows of any other ongoing community meetings and seeing what's happening there um and then the next month will be around restructure and re-engagement for me on my end in terms of trying to really loop in more community members, getting them more involved and, and um, also more updated and aware of what's happening in their community. Lindsay, what? I, I suspect that a lot of what Jennifer has to say is true. And, and Jennifer, I appreciate your comments about the makeup of our attendance group. Um, but I think you've also I think it is if you were able to sit down and talk to a lot of members of the community that have been involved with this over the last four years um and they felt comfortable with being really blunt with you um they would feel like uh there were a lot of promises about things were going to happen and then things haven't and the information has gotten sparse um and I, I think they, you know, I can remember sitting in the first and second NST meetings that people were actually kind of mad about this starting up. It's like, why are we starting one more thing, one more set of promises? It won't happen. Um, and they got a lot of promises made. No, that's fair. I, I, yeah. I so I think well, there's some trust that's going to have to be rebuilt. I'm sorry, Ann, I walked, talked over you. No, I was just going to say I second what Eileen has said. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, for bringing it up. And thank you, Eileen, for pointing it out. The reason is, is because a lot of people feel like, um, you know, they said when Complete Communities first started up, this is going to be a lot of smoke and mirrors. Things are not going to happen. We're going to get all excited about it and we're not going to get any of these things. And so over time, um, you know, a lot of people kind of fell off because nothing was happening. And this was actually before COVID. Yeah. So COVID was not the reason. This happened before COVID. They just saw nothing happening. And so then actually when Bethune started up, there were sides who felt like, well, I wanted to be this and I wanted to be that. So there were some fractures in what the community wanted. And after that, Bethune just kind of went dark. We couldn't get any information. We were actually told 
we can't give you any information. And so then when Bethune just kind of appeared, people didn't buy into it because there was no community involvement over the past, I'm gonna say nine months to a year. And so with that, all of the other projects that didn't come to fruition or nobody saw anything happening, the people who were very passionate about it, we used to have a lot of committee meetings, we had committee heads, and then it just seems like, um, I think there was a restructuring, I think is what happened, and the committee heads were just kind of, uh, the committees were just kind of dissolved, I guess. Uh, they were talking about starting up the Workforce Council. Well, the Workforce Council meeting has always been in with um, economy and jobs. So when they changed the name, I'll just use me as an example, that wasn't something I was passionate about. I wasn't looking at you know the, the workforce separated from the economy and jobs. I was interested in the economy and jobs and the effect for small businesses. Um, and I think that's kind of what happened. You know, once they restructured it, changed the names, people just kind of fell off. You know, Lindsay, it might be appropriate at this point, um, since you've got a month under you now, to reach out to each of the NST members and get their feedback and try to re-engage them. Because out of the group here on the call, I think there's two of us that were NST members. I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's you and me, Ann. I think that's it. Yep. And Jennifer, uh, as far as the super neighborhood um, combining this, um, there's a lot of reasons that that just may not work. Yeah, I, I, I know some of the history there. It's, yeah, I, I agree. I'm I'm always an optimist though. <laughs> you don't try, it will never happen. <laughs> I I am too. I never thought that complete communities was adverse to the super neighborhood. But right. that's just kind of how it's that's just kind of how it's become. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is good information. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, it's really helpful, and thank you all for being so honest and so transparent. And this uh, is, by the way, the NST has not met in three years. Okay. And I was in the IEDC meetings right before COVID hit, yes. and never got any information until what just came out two years later now. Okay. Well, that was one of... Um, In coming on, I knew that there had been a gap in information, hence why that meeting was so long. <laughs> so, yeah. Because I tried to find all of the things that I could prior to that were working on our end um, and things that had been put into play and also provide updates with Bethune because those were specifically requested of me and other meetings that I was joining to introduce myself to the community. Um, but this is all valuable. I think that. OK, I think I think I have an idea of. I start restructuring and rebuilding trust, but also um, work in a way that's a benefit to the community um, and plugging in. I don't. I believe in collaboration and I don't believe in reinventing the wheel on things. Um, and I also am a strong believer in implementation. I do not like to. I am a planner who does not like to overly plan. <laughs> I like to plan and like. Well, let's you had a works. very strong, very engaged NST when this got started. Um, so I'll just kind of leave that hanging in the air like that. But under still kind of our city of Houston programs, can you give us any update on the West of York? Repainting to three lanes project where that stands. I honestly cannot, but I can reach out to um, tra our transportation team and I can get you that information and send it out via email when I get an update. Yeah, you know, that should be something that's happening by now because we were planning that more than two years ago. We had a, a meeting in December of 19. 
I think. Um, and Ian, Ian was kind of running the show on that. Okay, I can I can reach out and see where that's at and what progress has been made, and I'll okay. make sure to get those back to you. Um, the IEDC report is located on Let's Talk Houston mm -hmm. under <laughs> the documents. If you haven't seen that. Um, so if anybody wants to take a look, it's all there. Um, and all of the documents, including the Bethune updates, are also there on the uh, Let's Talk Houston for anything that was presented um, at our last meeting when I took over. So just letting y'all know I'm very transparent with information, and I really appreciate your transparency um, and letting me know, you know, what's really going on, because that is very helpful. I also um, will let y'all know that I did do a writing tour and we did look at development. Uh, my background is architecture, by the way, but we did look at the development and the new development and what's going on. And we are working towards strategies on um, preserving the character of the neighborhood um, in the ways that we can on that front as well. So that's in the works. Um, and it is it is being assessed there there hasn't been any monumental strides but it is in the works since our last meeting that's happened so just wanted to update y'all on that any other comments about um the meeting structure or things no, moving I, just, I want to clarify so you saying cam's report on west montgomery is on let's talk houston no, so the IEDC report um, is on Let's Talk Houston. I think that was over the entire area, Cam, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's that's the report that I talked touched on last month that uh, had a number of recommendations for you know area wide, uh, specifically focused on economic development. But uh, if it's a, a specific West Montgomery report, uh, I'm not. 100% certain exactly what that's referring to. So that was Cam, that was on uh, the town center for Acres Homes. Okay, that's what the, the, okay. referring to the West Montgomery report is. Gotcha. Um, I know that we we have uh, that document, a couple of other documents related to uh, some, some previous planning exercises that have gone into. Uh, Center uh, project. Uh, Salt Houston. Um, I, looking through that, I'm not certain that. I'm not certain how it's packaged. Uh, I've, I've only looked at. I've looked through the documents, but I haven't seen a, a like a final deliverable that I'd be comfortable putting out on. Let's talk Houston specifically. Uh, but if there's some of that that you'd like to see, I can send that to you directly. Yes, I'll I'll put my information in the chat. I specifically want to see about the town center. So just to clarify, there was not a study done specifically for a West Montgomery town center, but that particular project may have been included in another study. OK, uh, th there, it was touched on in the IEDC report. That was a clear community goal. Um, and I know that there was, uh, I believe, a charrette was done. Uh, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, I'm going off memory here. I'm not 100% certain who led that charrette, but that was done a couple years back. Uh, University of Houston. Center. Was it UH? Thanks. Okay. Yep. Um, so I know that that's, that's some of the documents that I have seen in our files uh, for the town center project. Um, but let's start a dialogue via email. Uh, I will send you what I have access to. And if there's something that you think I should have access to that you don't see in that, uh, let me know and I'll I'll try to ask the right questions to get that. Okay, I know that um, Eileen had mentioned a couple of times that we needed to do uh, or try to do a livable centers um, study similar to the one that was done for Antoine. Is that right, Eileen? Yeah. It, it's a good model to use. Yeah. Yeah, and I, that's actually one of the things uh, I would like to engage that working group on is uh, setting a clear goal for if that's what we want to pursue, a little center study or something like that is what we want to pursue. I actually have some experience working with those studies 
when I was working in the Atlanta Metro, they have a very similar program and I know how useful that can be. Uh, but I'd like to kind of get, I'd like to get some, some local buy-in on if that's something we want to want to pursue. Uh, and if so, set a path to getting, to getting, you know, achieving that. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something that I want to use that working group to, to uh, discuss and get a clear plan on. I will say, and you mentioned uh, that your passion is small business. And that's one thing I want to provide something on through Let's Talk Houston. I'm not certain that I'll be able to post it this evening because I don't know that I can do that from my home computer. But um, we have a there is an event being hosted by the Small Business Development Center um, on Friday, uh, specifically for small businesses. Uh, we just got the information today, this afternoon. I saw it come through right before I left. Uh, but I want to get that out through Let's Talk Houston so that uh, it's a it's a resource uh, like a, a, a technical assistance resource uh, event on Friday uh, on the 4th. So I want to make sure we get that posted uh, on Let's Talk Houston, uh, if not this evening, then tomorrow. So, okay. so do check in for that as well. And I'll follow yeah. up on via email with you directly on the, uh, the town center uh, documents we have. I'm sorry, Lindsay, are you pulling that up? Kim, I suggested the Livable Center study mainly because as a group, we were kind of asked to come up with um, a scope for a study to look at a town center. It's kind of like you're asking us that aren't technic technicians in this area to develop a scope, but yet we've got already got a model that works. Um, and using that model seemed to make sense to me. So. Uh, that's a very good point, Eileen. Yeah. Speaking to the um, information that Cam is going to post, this is, is this what you were talking about, Cam, the business matchmaker Houston? Yep, that's it. And so, um, if I can, get, if I can get the live link, I'll put it in the chat um, and we'll also like um, Kim was saying, we'll get that posted on Let's Talk Houston um, as soon as we can. Lindsay, what is the status of the economy and jobs group or committee? Um, as far as I know, well, not as far as I know, the groups that were meeting when I was joining the meetings, there was no one in there. So, um, the the workforce council meeting was being held by Krista, um, who is now president of Land Bank, but that was ended. The last one was in January, um, so I I didn't even I wasn't even made privy to those until after joining and um, wasn't well, able to join one. Right, I can tell you that uh, up until now nothing was done. So. I'm kind of like asking, like, since you've taken over, what is the status of it or what is the status going to be? I just signed up on Let's Talk Houston uh, for the group, but has since you've taken over, has anybody expressed a desire to um, join? I know Yvette, uh, I'm sorry, Yvonne Green did, but she's not on the call tonight and myself, but is there anybody else that's expressed an interest in it? I think there I may have gotten two other registrants, but um, my goal is to push it out to meet with you all and just figure out if that is a legitimate strategy and to also push it out within the next month to get as much interest in buying as possible. Um, knowing that from the information you just gave me, um, it may be a little harder to get people <laughs> to join, yeah. um, but yeah as of now i just i'm not one that likes to meet just to meet um and i am a firm believer in implementation so i would love to start a small cohort and maybe if it maybe after the first um small project or maybe after the first project people actually see some momentum and some work being done they'll be more inclined to um, join us or like team up 
Um, and I will try to reach out and team up with as many partners as possible to make make things a success. But there has not been an overwhelming response. And I didn't know if that was because maybe everyone wasn't getting the information. Um, so I do need to kind of follow up with at least constant contact and um, the council member's office in trying to get that information pushed out to the community to see what the feedback is. Lindsay, I can tell you that after the um, the plan was adopted, there were a number of action teams that were created. I, as an NST member, asked what was going on with those team meetings and could we get some some kind of reporting and was told no. That, you know, there was a confidential relationship between the staff person and those teams. It's kind of like this is a this is a city activity. This is public information. Um, so I think you're going to have to go back kind of to the beginning to look at who agreed to lead those teams, who agreed to serve on them and re-engage in a grassroots kind of fashion. And what do you think? I think that's a, a good idea. I can tell you that we were actually planning when Sasha was a planner, mm -hmm. um, myself was on the committee, Eileen, um, a few other people, and we were actually planning to do a business pop up um, at a location on West Montgomery. And we had put quite a lot of work into that. A lot of planning had gone into that, um, finding a location and actually, um, you know, deciding when we were going to do it. And then when Sasha left, that was just kind of tabled. So um, I'll just give you kind of an update on what has happened since then. Um, I've met with a few of the community members who know the business, historical business history of Acres Homes. And we recently talked about putting together a historical asset map of all the businesses that used to be on West Montgomery. And um, so we're moving forward with that. We're not really waiting for anybody to tell us to do it. We would like to do this under Complete Community, but Complete Communities honestly has rebooted about five times since it started. And every time it reboots, we lose our momentum. And, um, you know, this is something that we are very passionate about, that we want to see more businesses be able to come on to West Montgomery, open up the down, um, the closed down storefronts and shops and things like that. So what we thought was if we could come together and do this um, digital map of the historical businesses in Acres Homes, it would not only let the people um, who wonder about Acres Homes, but the ones who are here now know that this used to be a very thriving community, a very thriving area. And we even talked about taking a digital map and actually getting it um, outfitted onto kind of like um, not a placard or a historical marker, but like put it on benches and, you know, every other block or so, so that you can see what used to be at this location. Um, you know, have some kind of a graphic and something written up. So we talked about that as early as yesterday. No, I think that's a wonderful idea. I would, I think a historical, um, a graphic timeline is a really powerful tool and it's something that visually can tie in everyone who's on that um, street and mm -hmm. captivate interest. I would love to tap in. I did hear Eric did pass on information about the business pop up, but um, he kind of transitioned really quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. He got deployed. So um, yeah, I would I would love to continue that work. Let's pick up where we left off. Um, I don't need to reinvent the wheel and I'm all for residents leading it because uh, I think personally my personal beliefs is I think that's the the best laid plans anyway um, those who are truly invested in it to let them learn how to advocate for themselves and just lean on um, the city resources for help because historically you know Acres Home has been underserved because people in certain positions have not done what they are supposed to do by the community. So um, just being transparent, I think that it's really great that residents are continuing to move this forward and I would love to help um, in any way that I can. And I'm sure Kim would as, as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, if, and if that's a great project and if there's anything we can do uh, as a resource and not impede your progress, uh, please let us know. 
we would sure. love to, to be supportive. Well, we would definitely like some direction on how to do it. I mean, I can pretty much um, pull up, you know, a way to create like on a Google map, a digitized map, but I'm sure there's probably a better way to do it that is, you know, um, more effective to, to be able to pass this out to more people. And we wanted to do it digitally because we felt like we could give it out to more people initially before we actually tried to um, put it into, you know, some kind of a hard form. And let me ask a, a question. In the city's GIS, don't you have historical uh, properties marked? I'm not sure if they have all the historical um, businesses marked in Acres Home. I can check on that. But if they don't and you have the information, we can definitely get them to update the map. That's not a hard process. And, or and that, that would give you a framework to work from instead of having to create it from scratch to just build off that GIS because that's used by everybody. Everyone. Um, we you have know, a community's yeah, GIS map also. I think Project Row Houses, I want to say, sponsored something similar to this, where it was a digital tour uh, off of your smartphone. I think they use QR codes so that you don't have something physical to maintain um, or to change if, if information is updated. You might want to talk to them about how they did theirs. Mm -hmm. oh, it sounds great. Um, it reminds me a lot of the Independence Heights mural. You can like scan that. It's a live location and when you scan it, uh, the, the history of Independence Heights pops up. It's on the side of their Whole Foods that's, that came up in Independence Heights. That mural is actually a live QR of the history of Independence Heights. So I'm, I'm all on board. This sounds great. So if you could plug me in. <laughs> That would be wonderful. Um, I think the Dallas mural is like that also. Okay. Yes, yes, exactly. And honestly, Cam and Lindsay, the more the city is seen as actively supporting, the better it helps uh, complete communities and engagement. So just right. FYI, my thoughts. No, it sounds spot Spot on. Yeah. Okay. I think we have... So if we could, if we could, um, I guess, I don't know, have a kind of a, a call for people who want to be on the workforce, uh, the economy and jobs community, whatever we're going to call it. Um, I think we need to do that sooner than later because, you know, kind of like Jennifer said, I don't want to be seen as the only one leading this project when I know that there's other people who would probably probably be interested. But, you know, they're probably just thinking there's nothing going on. I didn't want to go on Facebook and like post it because I wanted to talk to, um, you know, our group here first. But that is something that we were going to do is put it on our Acres Homes Facebook and just ask for people. If you know any history, let us know so that we could start compiling all the things that used to be on West Montgomery. So would it be helpful? Um, one, I think we can meet as a as a core of to kind of get things rolling and develop a strategy. Um, it also may be helpful. I can send it out via constant contact um, and just ask if anybody knows about the history and give a brief what we're trying to do. And maybe that will entice people to kind of join in. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we can get it done and I think we definitely can support. And you know, if we get more people, great. But I, I do think things have to kind of move forward, whether whether a lot more people subscribe to the group or not. So I, I'm all about um, moving forward with this. I think it's a great idea. Okay. If Lindsay, I think getting some information out pretty quickly, given that the mayor just had the ceremony naming the three houses down at Sam Houston Park as, uh, is it the Slavery Trail? Is that what they called it? Um, you know, we're just wrapping up um, Black History Month, and here's a chance to gather some more for up for next year. Maybe we'd, we'll have an event to do in Acres Homes next year. It, it may we may even be able to do it around Juneteenth, or um, I don't know what date you projected, but we could. There's we could always you know move it forward. It, that could happen way before. At least on VL phase one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all. I don't know. Great idea, Anne. 
Say again, Eileen. I said that's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, I I think it is too. I think everybody needs to know their history. Well, Thank buildings you. are coming down. Yeah. So this is Yvonne. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Hey Yvonne. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm on here. I'm just at the at the multi service center, so it's a lot of uh, you know, it's a lot of voting is today. But um, I I just wanted to say that I'm on board, and whatever y'all need me to do, I'm you know, I'm I'm uh, available. So I think those are all great ideas. I'm I'm about to mute myself again, but I did want to let you all know that I am here. And I think if if somebody didn't read through all the emails, they may not have saw the uh, the work groups they could sign up for. But that could have been why more people didn't join. But um. Otherwise, I think, you know, a lot can be done with a few, so I'm good either way. Okay. So, Lindsay, I know you promised we were going to have a shorter meeting and we kind of all sidetracked the meeting. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the best laid plans. Hey, yes, for input. <laughs> This is great. I'm sorry, I had to get my charger because my it's telling me I'm I'm running low, so I'm uh -oh. just plugging in. Okay, I'm back. No, I think it was great. I I'm I appreciate the feedback. It's a collaborative process, and again, um, you guys are the topic experts, so I think it's a good conversation to have. I'm I'm all for it. If y'all are okay with staying longer, then <laughs> just, I'm fine. Um, we were gonna move move into project updates. Did you guys do you still want to go over those? Sure. Okay. Jennifer, did you want to share screen or did you want me to pull the presentation? Um, do you have it handy? If not, I, I can it on the link. Okay, hold on. I can I can do it. Okay, well, let's see if it will let me open share tray. There we go. Are all seeing healthy outdoor communities? Yes. Beautiful. So um, we have a couple of things um, from healthy outdoor community side. So if, if you're not familiar with us, I'll, I think I know all of you though. <laughs> Our mission is to support good health and well-being in children, youth, and families of historically undervalued communities by utilizing free, safe, and easily accessible neighborhood parks and green spaces. In a nutshell, um, our goal is to promote outdoor and nature equity as a tool to fight health disparities um, in, in underserved communities. And we received grant funding to do this work in Acres Homes and Third Ward. Um, so in Acres Homes, through our monthly collaborative meetings, which include they're open to all community members to participate in and the community members get to vote on stuff at each meeting. So through a, a series of meetings uh, where we talked and voted and the community told us, gave us input into what they wanted. Um, this is our tentative budget for, for spending funds through May 31st of this year. So just a few more months. This is a tentative budget though, because we left this very loosey goosey. So if the community decides to go in a different direction somewhere along the way, or maybe switch funds from one bucket to another bucket, we can, we have that flexibility. The other reason it's tentative is because if we get to May 31st, we don't have to feel like we have to spend all of this money just to spend it. So if we don't spend it all by May 31st, it just rolls over to the next year's bu budget. Um, none of it gets lost. And so that way we're able to really focus on quality and not just quantity for the sake of spending money. Um, so all of these buckets of money were voted on by the community and agreed on by community members that participated in our meetings. So $12,000 we have toward park events and programming, $8,000 towards service projects and supplies. We are going to be building an outdoor classroom showcase at one of the schools in Acres Homes that other schools can kind of look to for inspiration on how to develop their own outdoor classroom spaces. Um, we're putting in three additional little free libraries. We've already put in three, so this is an additional three. Um, for gardens, uh, we had this 4250 to spend toward 
all things garden related. The community said, ah, we have so many garden projects going on right now. What we really need to do is activate our existing gardens and promote educational programming in those spaces. So that's what this money is going toward. We have a large bucket for tactical urbanism projects. Um, and the community at this point has kind of decided they want to do things around um, making school areas safer. So things like improving crosswalks and, and things like that. Um, we have $3,000 to spend toward any kind of advocacy efforts the community is interested in. And then we have $2,500 uh, $2, to spend towards some training and educational opportunities. Um, and those are all decided on by community members as well. So for most of these buckets, like the park events and programming, service projects, the outdoor classroom, the garden programming, those are all things that you uh, as community members or community-based organizations can apply for um, some of that money. It hasn't been all allocated yet. So please share this link, the short URL link that's at the bottom there. Share it with anybody you can in the community um, because it's a lot of money. And if I'm being honest, most of it hasn't been applied for yet. So if you apply, there's a pretty good chance. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um, and we want to get as much community input into that as possible. To give you an idea, um, under service projects, uh, if you guys know Zelma Fields, who's in the Willow Run, um, uh, it, it, it's not technically named as a civic club, but it's basically a civic club. Uh, they're doing a sidewalk cleanup off of uh, the memorial um, uh, the Veterans Memorial area. Uh, and then another one we're doing is we're going to be touching up the Black Lives Matter mural on Carver. Um, so there are some things like that. We've gotten a ton of schools applying for the outdoor classroom. And, and um, we're, oh, on the first Saturday in April, we are hiring Ivy Walls to do a gardening um class for the community. It'll be free to community members and participants will get free like growing stuff to take home and start growing plants indoors. Um, it will be a class that not only talks about growing like in a, in a garden in your yard, but like speaking to people that live in apartments or don't have a yard to do container gardening. So that will be really great. Um, and then our next meeting, our, we meet every second Monday of the month from 6 to 7.30. And once again, anybody's welcome to attend. This is where community members give us their input and vote on things that we're deciding on. So you can register at this short URL. Um, I'll put this in the chat as well. So that's everything outdoor, healthy outdoor communities related. Um, I wanted to give you guys an update on the NEO school-based learning gardens project that um, be well uh, Acres Homes is actually funding for us. They'll be speaking next, I think. Um, so these are the seven Acres Home schools that we're doing these big garden projects at, and they all need community members to volunteer um, to keep their gardens sustainable. That was part of their sustainability plan they had to come up with. So if you're interested or if you want to share this information with others um, and they're interested in, in volunteering with one of these school gardens, please have them email me so I can put them in touch with the schools. We're breaking ground on these gardens in the next couple of weeks. So very exciting stuff. Um, and I could talk all night, but I'll stop now. Thank you. Jennifer, have you, put, Jennifer, have you posted those volunteer ops in um, the Facebook pages that serve the community? I haven't put this on the Facebook page. Um, uh, there, there are things involved when you're dealing with stuff that's happening on a school campus. And yeah. so that's why I haven't really posted that to Facebook. But all of the funding opportunities, yes, they have been posted to all of the Acres Homes Facebook pages I have access to. I suspect that you may have an untapped pool of volunteer prospects that don't have kids in those schools. We do. Judy Harden, which many of you know, she is um, she's volunteering and she's part of the leadership team for the Carver School Garden. So I am absolutely aware of that. But that's um, because of the nature of doing things on school campuses. I'm spreading the word through these kinds of channels and through word of mouth instead of just plastering it on Facebook at this point. Okay. That may change, but right now we're going to see what we get through these types of channels.
and through the school's Facebook pages. Awesome. Any more questions for today? Um, Ruth is on from Be Well. Hi, did you want to share your screen? Hi, I'll just go real quick since we're already at meeting time also. Um, and I know many of the people here. So I'm Ruth Beckus. I'm the director of UL Communities um, at MD Anderson. I'm here with my colleague, Amelia Brown, who's a program manager on our team for Buell Acres Homes. Um, we have our Buell Acres Homes Steering Committee meeting tomorrow morning. Um, if you're not already involved and you'd like to participate, um, we'd love to have you there. We'd love to have you be involved with us. Um, I would say for the, the help section of the Complete Communities Plan, just to some of the earlier conversation, um, we have done a lot of work to try and reach out to the NST members and the organizations and individuals that have been involved in that. And I think we have seen a lot of success in sort of reviving some of that plan. And we're able to now um, fund and implement a lot of the projects that were mentioned in that particular section of the plan. So that's partly what we've been trying to do with, with Beulah Acres Homes. Um, so uh, Lindsay did a great job of posting some of the things that are happening on the Let's Talk Houston page. I don't know why I'm so blurry, but I can't, I can't fix it now. Um, so we have our um, soccer, we have some soccer clubs going. We have many gardening projects going. As Jennifer was mentioning, we're the, we're the cause of many of the gardening projects that are that are underway in partnership with NEO and with Prairie View A&M um, and with Beauty's Garden uh, as well. So we're excited to have a lot of those things happening. Um, we have some great programming going in the schools for getting kids active and healthy and engaging the families, um, all those types of things. So keep a lookout for um, some announcements. I know Lindsay's gonna be including many of those things. We'll have um, food fairs with Lone Star College once a month now as well. Um, so lots to lots to share. If you'd like to know more, Amelia and I will put our information in the chat and happy to talk to anyone and would love any feedback on how we could be doing a better job of it too. So thanks for the opportunity, Lindsay. I'll make sure I have a concise update for next time as well. No problem. Thank you, Ruth. Yes, the Be Well meetings are super packed. They have well attended and they have a ton of things going on. So the health portion um, at, of the action plan, at least for the month that I've been here, <laughs> does seem like it has a ton of traction and a lot of things happening and moving forward. And then is Linda, yes, Linda, would you like to go next? I actually have the flyer, but I wasn't sure if you wanted to share your screen. Linda, you're muted. Maybe she can't hear us. No. OK, well, Spring Fling is coming. March 12th. In Thank case, you, Sister Lynn. Thank you, Sister Lynn. <laughs> can you hear me? This? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're encouraged to attend the Vogel Creek Spring Fling. Oh, I'm with Houston Parks Boards. Thank you, Lindsay. And just a reminder uh, mark your calendars for Saturday, March 12th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. We'll have Vogel Creek Spring Fling. Of course, our uh, sponsors are Neo, Be Well Acres Home, and of course, Houston Parks Board. And it's a time to um, get more information about the Inwood Re Recreation Phase project regarding Vogel Creek. So we hope uh, you will register and come join us. Uh, it'll be a social and educational time during uh, Saturday, March 12th, 9 to 11. Thank you. Thank you. So community updates. Um, I don't know if we have any additional. There is a virtual plant sale in an in-person seminar happening March 26th. This is the annual white oak plant sale. So we're back bigger and better than ever. Wonderful. For those of you that aren't familiar with this, this supports our beautification projects in the management district 
and um, our our plants focus on native and adaptive plants that are butterfly and hummingbird uh, supporters. Um, so it's a good chance to come on out. It's a tax-free sale. Um, the presentation will be in person that morning and there's a registration link for it. Um, and then we'll go virtual at noon on the 20, March 26th through 6 p.m. on April 3rd. And then the plants will be picked up at Tree Search Farms on the 8th and 9th. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. I think it's already on Let's Talk Houston, um, but I'll make sure to put it on any other channels that I have it also. Great. Thank you. Um, the other two, I think we talked about last time, but these are still going on. Um, Step Healthy initiative. As well as the vaccination. Um, at the health department between the 29th and March 10th. So that is still happening as well. Are there any other updates or announcements that anyone wants to give? Uh, this is Anita. I just wanted to mention in case there's some um, individuals on the on the call that uh, normally attend the Acres Homes PIP meeting is my understanding that they will be having a face-to-face um, -face meeting, um, PIP meeting on the fourth Thursday of the of this month. Last month, I think they did meet virtually, but it's my understanding that this month they're going to go back to um, the face-to-face -face time. So, just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Thanks for that information. If you get information on where that'll be or times if you could pass that on so I could distribute that that would be great. I have a, a question like for Anita. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. This is Ann Watkins. Um, you probably saw my email today about um, the elders and acres homes mm -hmm. who are being evicted. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you were included on that email from Takasha Francis. And yes, so I just okay. wanted to ask, is there something as a complete community component we can start doing or or possibly think about doing that directly addresses the elders and acres homes who either are in desperate need of home repair or they're being evicted right now? The only thing I can do is send them to Lone Star Legal Aid who is, of course, very inundated with evictions because all the moratoriums have been lifted. But also, uh, I've been reaching out to different developers. There's a lot of construction going on in Acres Homes. There's an awful lot of builders who are, you know, building on this land in Acres Homes and making money. And I just think it's pretty awful to see a, you know, half million dollar home go up next to an elder's home who is, you know, virtually unlivable. So I don't know if there's room for that in complete communities or, you know, Miss Ivory, if you know something uh, more in the Department of Neighborhoods that can be done, but I just wanted to bring that up before we close out. Okay. Um, we can we can discuss we can definitely discuss it. I know that the Department of Neighborhoods they do have different workshops that I'm I'm sure that a lot of seniors probably are not um, getting involved um, getting involved with, especially because most of those meetings have been done virtually. But um, I'll be more than happy to, to to discuss to see if there's something that our department might be able to help with. Okay, thank you. And in terms of our department, we have been looking at areas of where the development is happening um, and where some of the neighborhood preservation tools may be able to um, work, but also um, looking through other strategies of how to help with, with that situation as well in order to um, preserve the neighborhoods. So that that is an ongoing process. We did tour the neighborhood though um, within this last month. So I don't think we have I don't think we have in complete communities a direct committee for that to address that. 
Um, is it something we can do? Because I think everything in this book um, has already been voted on. Mm -hmm. We do have a housing component. Um, I think it could fall under housing. Yes, I think that's something we can do. It would just be a matter of re-engaging um, those or engaging people that would be um, willing to, you know, brainstorm and kind of work on those initiatives under housing. Mm -hmm. And one idea that comes to mind is with the LISC grant that's that's opening now, um, it would be a good opportunity for maybe a community based organization or, or civic club or group of residents to get together and maybe get some funding to purchase tools or, or different things that they would need to be able to help seniors in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. There's a tool warehouse that's available to rent tools out for free. To uh, community organizations. Yes, oh, what cheap warehouse cheap. is that? It, it's everything from lawnmowers to hammers to water hoses and all Which kinds one? of stuff. That's huh? through Keep You So Beautiful. Yeah. Oh. And the Houston do, School Bank, um, you can rent That one's lot. not free though. If Keep Houston Beautiful is doing it for free, that's fantastic. No, you can rent the you can rent the tools for free. You leave them a credit card, you get, you know, they put a, a basically a deposit on your account and you bring back all the tools and everything's free. I keep Houston beautiful. Yeah. And okay. it's specifically for doing things like community cleanups. Jennifer, I went down and got shovels and rakes and hose and all that kind of stuff when we planted the butterfly garden. I had a whole truck full of tools. Awesome. Yeah. Any other comments or anything else before we close it out? Good. Well, feel free to reach out to me. I'm here readily available. Um, plug me into anything you have going on and I will figure out the best way in which I can help and be an advocate or um, I can connect you to a partner who maybe is already doing the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all yeah. have a nice evening. Okay, good night. Good night, good night everybody. Bye. Thank, Thank you, too. Good night. Thank you, Miss Lindsay.